Hello and welcome. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can modify the original headlamp on a 1982 Honda Urban Express to accept replaceable LED bulbs. On the 1982 Urban Express, you cannot actually just replace the bulb within the headlamp. You have to replace the entire headlamp assembly itself. This is kind of a pain in the butt because many times they're hard to find and if they're still working, they can be a little pricier than you would want them to be. Inside the original headlamp, you'll find an 1157 bulb. It looks like it should be replaceable, but you just can't crack open that headlamp to replace it. So I'll show you how to do this with a little bit of modification. And we're actually going to use an LED bulb because they last a little bit longer and a little bit smaller and fits in there easier. The very first thing we're going to need to do is to remove the headlight from the housing itself. This will be done with the two Phillips screws on either side of the headlight assembly. Once you get those two screws taken out, you can gently pull on the front frame to pop that off and then you can pull the headlamp assembly out in its entirety. The headlight on our Urban Express has been a little scuffed up. It has seen a little bit better days, but we can still go ahead and get this all set up. And if we find a better assembly later down the line, we can just swap that out. With the headlamp pulled out, we now see the wires that provide power. In the case of the Urban Express, the blue wire that you see here is the high beam. The white is the low beam and our green wire is gonna be the ground. If you notice, there are actually two blue wires that feed into the one single blue wire. So that's why uh, rather than disconnecting those connectors, I'm just gonna cut them off closer to the headlamp itself. Go ahead and slide this little rubber boot back and I recommend cutting the wires as close to the headlamp assembly as you can. I cut these rather than disconnect the connectors because this way we only have three wires, otherwise we would have to deal with that second blue wire. And with that headlamp disconnected now, we can start disassembling that. With the headlamp disconnected, you'll notice that there is a screw on the top and a screw on the bottom, which holds the frame to the headlamp itself. We can go ahead and unscrew those and get the frame disconnected from the headlamp. For the next step, we're gonna to need to pull the burnt out bulb out of the assembly itself. Unfortunately, the assembly is sealed and the bulb is soldered in there, so we're gonna actually have to cut the back of this housing off. The fact that this is sealed is the reason we can't easily replace this bulb in the first place. So by cutting it open, we can gain easy access in the future to replace bulbs as needed. On the back of the housing, you'll see the cylinder that the wires attached to where the bulb is. We're actually gonna cut this off as close to the base as possible. You can cut it completely flush with the back of the assembly itself. I would recommend using a hacksaw, but of course I cannot find mine, so I'm gonna use an old miter saw that I don't care about any longer. Even without the dedicated hacksaw, it only takes a minute or two to saw through this. You'll notice as you're sawing, it should feel pretty smooth until you actually get through the layer that we need to cut through and then it kind of sticks. So I just keep slowly rotating the headlight assembly as I saw. I can kind of feel where I get through and you can keep checking it throughout the process to look to see if you're through that first layer of metal. I'm not sure what type of metal this is, but you'll know when you've made it all the way through because you will see the bronzish metal shining through. Be very careful to not cut any deeper than you need to, but it should only take two to three minutes and you'll see a seam forming as you cut around. Now that I've completely sawn this through, you can see that the socket is loose within the housing. It's just held in there by the bulb because the bulb is too large to make it through this hole. That's another reason that we're gonna be using an LED bulb so we don't have to drill a larger hole. In order to get this bulb out, we're actually going to have to break it. So you'll notice that if I pull on this socket, there's a very thin line of glass that I can see. You may not be able to pick it up on camera, but you can usually pull the socket out just far enough to be able to barely see some glass. I'm gonna take just a small chisel or a flathead screwdriver and very carefully, I'm just gonna tap it until the glass breaks. Obviously be careful when doing this, wear eye protection if you feel the need. Once we've broken our glass, I'm just gonna take it over to my trash can. I'm gonna shake out all the glass shards from the inside. Make sure there's no remaining glass shards when you're done. So with our headlamp assembly cut and our bulb removed, we can now move on to the next step. For the next step, we actually need to replace the socket that we just sawed out of the headlight assembly. To do this, I'm gonna use an aftermarket replacement taillight assembly from Walmart. In my case, I made sure that the socket was the exact same size as the bulb previously, but be aware that if you use a different taillight, you may have to use a different size bulb. To start, I'm gonna first take the red lens off the back, go ahead and hold on to that, because you never know when you may need that in the future. After we open the taillight, we're gonna have to remove that existing halogen bulb. Now 
with the lens out of the way, you can actually push the wires through the bottom and pull them out through the socket assembly. Hold on to these wires, we will be reusing these. With the wires removed, first thing we'll need to do is remove the bottom plate that's on here. In my case, this is fastened with four spot welds. Using a drill and drill bit, I'm just gonna drill out these spot welds and then use a flathead screwdriver to pop the seams. You can pull that little bottom plate off and discard it. You don't need that anymore. The next step is to modify this a little bit to get it to match up with our housing. In the case of my tail light, there actually is a little bit of clear plastic on the side of this uh, housing. I'm gonna remove that by actually cutting the metal bracket that holds it in place. So in this case, I'm cutting just to the left of the rivet that holds it in place, but to the right of the plastic. I do it this way so I don't have to worry about cutting or breaking the plastic. I can just cut these metal strips and it pops right out easily. Now that that plastic's out of there, we can remove the entire edge from this little housing, and then we'll get left with basically just the bottom piece. We're gonna cut this bottom piece down because we're gonna need to fit this onto the back of our housing. To do this, I basically cut this circular base into a rectangular strip. Because we drilled out those spot welds, we're actually left with some existing holes in this base. I'm gonna position these so I can use these as my mounting holes when I go to put this on the back of the housing. I'm gonna do a little bit of trimming to remove any sharp edges, and I'm gonna take a file to it just to knock off any burrs as well as any sharp splinters. You can see now that I basically got the socket sticking out of something that's about the size or shape of a band-aid. I'm going to use these pliers just to bend this a little bit to get it to fit around the curve of the housing. This socket is actually what we're going to take and put it inside the headlight assembly where the previous socket was. We're going to use those two holes that we saved and those are actually going to be the mounting locations for the screws. I chose to fasten mine using screws so that way I can easily remove it in the future to replace the bulb if necessary, but you could use something like JB Weld or some sort of adhesive just to put this in place. At this point, we can actually reinsert those black and red wires that we removed earlier. Be sure to pay attention when you're reinserting these. There's a small tab that fits exactly in a notch on the socket. The final thing we need to do here before we move forward is we actually need to cut a small notch next to the socket on the long side of our strip. We are gonna to have to run a wire through this notch, so be aware that when you position the socket on your headlight assembly, there should be enough room to run a wire through there. I'm gonna use a drill bit, and I'm gonna use those existing holes as reference, and I'm gonna drill through the housing so that way I can put my mounting screws in. test the fitment with those mounting screws and we're almost ready to move on. Now 
Now that our new socket is ready and able to be attached to the headlamp, we can go ahead and wire everything up. First, I'm gonna use my wire strippers to strip off the end of the wire so that we can get good contact between all our connections. Go ahead and twist those ends together. Again, the blue is the high beam, the white is the low beam, and the green is your ground. You may have to do some testing with your LED to determine which wire is which. In our case, the black was the high beam and the red was the low beam. The most important part of the wiring is actually gonna come right here. The green ground wire must be run through that notch that we cut on the side of our socket, and then it has to be soldered onto the side of the socket body itself. So this will be our ground wire. You may need some help for this, so get a buddy to hold it in place, and then try to get a little bit of solder on it to hold it to the side of that socket. I'm aware my soldering skills are not up to par, I'm working on that. With that green ground wire attached to the side of the socket itself, we can now solder our other wire connections. We'll solder the blue to the black wire and we'll solder the red to the white wire. After I've got those connections soldered, I went ahead and wrapped them with electrical tape just to prevent any shorting. I went ahead and fired the scooter up for a quick test, and as you can see, the LED is working. I'm going to reattach the frame to the headlight assembly, and I'm going to slide all that back into the main housing itself. Once this is working, we're actually going to mount our new socket to the back of the previous housing. Carefully insert the LED into the back of the housing and you can use the holes and screws from before to mount the socket into place. Once this is all set up, we can go ahead and put everything back into the bike. We're going to reinstall with the two screws on either side. With everything wired up and put back together, we're good to go. As far as illuminating the road in front of you, it may not be the best, but it definitely makes you visible to other traffic at night, which is the most important part for us. Thanks so much, and let me know if you want to learn more about working on an 82 Urban Express.